Hey everybody, it's Dr. Taylor and welcome to today's video where we're going to continue talking about the different types of measurement scales. So this is the third video in the series and today we're going to be talking about interval scales. So let's get started. Okay, so interval scales, what are they and how do we analyze them? So the interval scale is the second highest level of measurement scales and ratio is the highest and then Below interval scales, we have ordinal and nominal. So interval scales are very similar to ordinal scales in that the measures or the numbers uh, that are used to identify the attribute actually have meaning. So the numbers matter. If you remember with nominal variables, the numbers don't matter. They're arbitrary. But when we moved into ordinal, they had meaning. And now they still continue to have meaning. Um, so the order of the numbers matters. There is a hierarchy that exists between the categories where one category is better or more than the other. So it's different from an ordinal scale in that now the categories have to have equal groupings. So where ordinal, <coughs> we had um, some groupings that were unequal. If you remember income, maybe we had one category that had $25,000 of income. The next one covered a band of $50,000. And then we had a 150,000 plus, which was kind of an infinite number because we didn't know what the largest amount of income was that somebody could have. With interval scales, we have set intervals. So if we wanted to look at an income scale, each of those groupings would be equal. So each category has equivalent intervals. And the difference between one and two is the same as the distance and difference between two and three and the different and the distance between three and four. So let's talk about an example of a restaurant visit. So if we had this question, how many times a week do you visit the Lucky Chicken restaurant? One to two, three to four, or five to six. And notice that the Lucky Chicken is only open for lunch and dinner six days a week. So the maximum someone could visit for lunch would be six times a week. So we know that we have a, um, we have a set point from zero times a week to six times a week. Now notice we did not include zero in this scale. And that is because for this particular research question, we would be asking people who already visit. So this survey is going to people who currently are patrons of the restaurant, and therefore we wouldn't include a zero number. If we included a zero, we could turn it into a ratio number and have it, and have it be an open-ended question. Um, or we could expand the categories out. Um, so it's important to know that. And so that makes it an interval question. But what is the interval that's being used to create the scale? What is the distance between each of the, those three scales? One to two, three to four, five to six. What is the interval? Well, if you said two, you're correct. Very good. So that's the interval between the two. And they're equal from one category to the next and from one scale to the next. So a Likert scale example, please indicate the extent to which you agree or disagree with the following statements about Craig's Sporting Goods website. And so this is what it would look like. The website is easy to navigate and then you choose strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly agree as your scale. So it's a five point scale where strongly agree would be a one. I mean, I'm sorry, strongly disagree would be a one, disagree would be a two, neutral would be three, agree would be four and strongly agree would be five. You always have the most negative uh, statement be the closest to zero. So one, two, three, four, five, and the highest number is the most positive number. And so people would click what their answers were, and this is what a Likert scale would look like. So how do you analyze interval scales? Well, just like nominal scales, you can report frequencies as either counts or percentages. 
just like nominal scales, you can report mode, which is just the most frequently occurring. And you could have multiple modes depending on how many categories that you have. Just like ordinal scales, you can report the median, which is where you put all the answers um, in value order and you find the one that's exactly in the middle. Unlike ordinal and nominal scales, interval scales allow you to calculate a mean. And so the mean is just the average of all respondents' answers. So you simply add up their answers, divide by how many cases you have. So what does this look like in an example? <clears throat> well, if you have the survey question, how many times a week do you visit the Lucky Chicken restaurant? And you have one to two, three to four, five to six, and you have 11 respondents who answered, and these are their answers. Uh, so we have a sample size of 11. When we do the analysis and we put all of the data in order, we can find that we have a mode of one, we have a median of two because it's right in the middle. And then if you add all these up and divide by 11, you get a mean of 1.73. If we do our frequencies, we find that five people answered one to two times a week, four people answered three to four times a week, and two people answered five to six times a week. And if we do it in percentages, we find that 45.5% of patrons visit one to two times per week, and only about 18% visit five to six times a week. We still have that issue of percentages. So in this case, it um, averages to be out, it, I'm sorry, it sums up to be 100.1%. So it's a little over, but that's a rounding issue. So always remember to be aware of these rounding issues and be ready to discuss them with your client. Um, but this is how you do your analysis, the mean, the mode, the median, and the mean. And that's it for analyzing interval scales. So that's it for today's video, Types of Measurement Scales Workshop Part 3 all about interval scales. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Talk to you later.